Greetings, family. Welcome to the African Exodus Show. I'm your host, Tini Cherie, here to you with a new video. Before we get started with today's segment, I want to remind you, if you have not already joined my Telegram channel, that is the best place to contact me. That's also just the best place to get notifications anytime I post a video. If you don't want to rely on YouTube, that is the best way to do so. So you can go to the link in the description. It says Telegram. You click that link. It will take you right to your app store. It's very easy to download. In addition, if you want to support this channel, you could do so two ways. You can do so on Cash App. In addition, you can also add yourself to my Patreon. There, I also share a weekly exclusive just for you. So I saw a story pop up about President, former President Donald Trump. I wanted to talk about it because he is selling a Bible on his website called the God Bless America Bible. It reminds me of a contradiction that I've always felt being inside of church. I've always felt this contradiction whenever you hear people say things like, God bless America, God bless the USA. The question is, would Yah bless something that he has already pronounced judgment over? And what are we saying whenever we ignore the wickedness of a country, the wickedness of a nation, and especially one like the United States that has catastrophic effects all over the world? All over the world, people are suffering because of U.S. imperialism. What does it say when people are willing to ignore that truth that's right in front of our faces, open for all to see, but we ignore it in order to say things that are going to instead promote the nation as if it is a Christian nation? So let's just jump right into the article. It said, Trump promotes God bless the USA Bible selling for $59.99. In a video promoting the new God bless the USA Bible, former President Donald Trump holds up the book, an American flag rippling across its cover and declares, make America pray again. The new Bible selling for $59.99 pairs scripture with the Constitution. Now I want you to understand the hubris, the blasphemy of this right here. It pairs scripture with the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, the Bill of Rights, and the Pledge of Allegiance, as well as lyrics to the popular song, God Bless the USA, by country singer Lee Greenwood, which often plays at Trump rallies and events. In a promotional video, Trump says the Bible uses the KJV of the text. Its release comes during Holy Week, a fact Trump noted in a post on Truth Social. Happy Holy Week. Let's make America pray again. As we lead into Good Friday and Easter, I encourage you to get a copy of the God Bless the USA Bible. A website for the Bible states that the item is not political and has nothing to do with any political. A website for the Bible states that the item is not political and has nothing to do with any political campaign, and that no proceeds from its sales will go to Trump's campaign for president. The site notes that this is only the Bible, a Bible that is endorsed by President Trump. So Trump is obviously very smart, even if it's true that no proceeds will go to his campaign. He knows that this will add to his campaign because one of the things that's being paraded in evangelical Christianity is that Donald Trump is God's choice. Donald Trump is what is going to save America, that if Biden's reelected, America will descend into chaos, you know. So he's being marketed as being the candidate that is the God-fearing man who is trying to save this nation. He knows exactly what he's doing by putting a Bible out like this. But I want to go through some of the particulars. So let's go back up. It says that this Bible is going to pair the scripture with the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, the Bill of Rights, Pledge of Allegiance. I mean, we can just talk about the fact that no one scripturally should feel justified pledging allegiance to a flag. Your only allegiance, if you're truly a Christian, if you're truly a Christian, if you're truly a believer of the Bible, if you're truly a practicer of the Bible, if you are someone who regards yourself as a follower of the way to Yahusha, you should not be pledging allegiance to any flag because your only allegiance is to the kingdom of Yahuwah. That's just, that's just fact. So that in itself should be problematic. But let's not skip over this history. We should all be aware by now of the history of the United States. If you're not aware of the history of the United States, then I will put a few a few videos, a few videos after this video in the end where you will see um, a number of things that I talked about, about the Masonic history of this country. The fact is the United States was literally founded by Freemasons who were Luciferians, people who were doing so to create a new world order, an order of ages. This is well documented. This is a fact that the people who founded America 
if anything, were deists. They were not people who actually believed in the Bible. Although they went to church, that was basically them going to church the way Trump goes to church. That is, they understood it was, it was in their favor politically to appear as Christian, but when they were not at church, they were not praying to the God of the Bible. So if you think about the fact that even at the signing of the Declaration of Independence, a highly Masonic event, Freemasons everywhere, the fact that the Constitution written by Freemasons, all of these things are literally crafted by people who have a Luciferian agenda. And you're taking those secular and ungodly and antichrist formations and trying to pair it with scripture. And you think that Yah is going to bless that. Let that make sense. Let that make sense. Putting something that was openly anti-Yah, openly anti-Yahusha and putting it in scripture and saying, God bless America. You actually think that Yah would bless that. So I think number one, and this proves something that I've found to be very evident with evangelical, modern, Protestant Christianity, Christianity in general, is that most people are not aware of who the God of the Bible is. The fact that he is commanded that he not be included with the worship of any false deities, that he not be used for expediency, that he not be uh, made for catchphrases and made for for convenient slogans, but have no heart to worship him in spirit and in truth. He's been very clear that he abhors such behaviors or like he would abhor taking a Masonic document, Masonic ceremonies, Masonic uh, uh, um events and trying to make it seem like these people were doing things for Yah when they were not. So we know how he feels about people mixing his word and misusing his word. We know it because he has told us over and over again. And it's up to you whether you would rather ignore what he has said clearly, what he has neglected, what he or not neglected, what he has rejected as far as expressions of worship to him that try to mix in political agendas, you should be well aware by now how he feels about the fact that some people are using his name in order to pass legislation that has nothing to do with him, promote people who have nothing to do with him, put people in position who are oppressive to his chosen people. Think about all of the corruption that goes into a president like Trump, like Biden, like any of these candidates. Think about the fact that you're trying to put this person up on a pedestal, a holy pedestal, although you are going to ignore the many crimes that these people have done or committed, have committed, will commit in the name of the presidency of the United States. So the contradictions are just glaring. But as I said, I've always felt this uh, conflict. You know, I mean, when I would go to church and it would be time for praying for America I always felt a conflict because I know what America is about. I know not just the history of it. I know what America does on a daily basis. And I would like to challenge anyone who might subscribe to the God bless the USA type of philosophy. Are you aware of America's presence in the Bible? Have you considered does America, the greatest country to have ever existed as far as military power, as far as as uh, military in general, honestly, as far as economies, as far as influence, have you considered that such a major country that is unprecedented would not be in the Bible prophetically? Could this country have been skipped over in the Bible? Would the Bible neglect to mention this nation? Well, the Bible does mention this nation. It mentions it actually very explicitly. And we're going to go through two scriptures, and there's many more, but we're just going to cover two that show you that this country has judgment pronounced against it. We're going to start with Isaiah 47. It says, come down and sit in the dust, virgin daughter of Babylon. So I want to pause right there. Virgin daughter of Babylon. Who do you think the virgin daughter of Babylon is? Well, you have to know who Babylon is to know who the virgin daughter of Babylon is. So if you go back to the Babylon empire, you understand that Babylon never truly ended, that Babylon essentially, when it would die, another country would come up in its stead and it would exercise power in a similar fashion. And also it would continue the religious traditions of the original Babylon Babylon kingdom. So it would continue the legacy of the nation. It would continue the culture of the nation. It would continue the practices, the wickedness of the nation, the military exploits. It would continue that same trend inside of the world, even though the original Babylon was no longer there. So for example, you had the original Babylon later on. What do you have? The Medes and the Persians. You have 
you have um, Rome, you have the Greeks, you have all of these countries that come up after Babylon. So now that you know that there was a country that called Babylon, a mighty empire that conquered most of the of the known world at that time. When you know that, what country do you think is the daughter of Babylon? So when you know about the culture of Babylon, that will inform you who the daughter of Babylon is. When you know that the religious ceremonies that are practiced in the West, when you know that the holidays, the the days of the week, the architecture, so much of what is in the West comes from the originally the Babylon Empire and it has morphed inside of different eras. So for example, you'll have an expression of it inside of the from the Greeks, you'll have an expression of it from the Romans, but all of this descended down to the nations of today. So knowing this, what country do you think, if anyone in the world, would be the daughter of Babylon? And it doesn't have to be one country. I believe that this applies to many countries, but there's one country that stands out among all of them. One country that has the largest military in the world. One country that controls so much inside of the global south. One country that controls the world economy, one country that everyone's afraid to stand up against, that country is the United States. So when you think about the United States not only has the presence of being a Babylon empire, a Babylon power inside of the world, but also with it, it has the culture from that same kingdom, again, that has been passed on to the Medes, the Persians, to the Greeks, to the Romans. It has that culture. It has the spiritual system, the spiritual wickedness. Understand where Freemasonry originates from. So it has all of these things operating inside of it. America would be the daughter of Babylon. And if it's you want to include the other European powers, then America is the pinnacle, while the other European powers are the other um, are the other supports of this Babylon system that lend to the power of the United States. So let's read this again. Come down and sit in the dust, virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground without a throne, daughter of the Chaldeans. Who's the daughter of the Chaldeans? It would be America or also the other European powers. For you will no longer be called tender and delicate. Take the milestone and grind flour, remove your veil, strip off the skirt, uncover the leg, cross the rivers. Your nakedness will be uncovered. Your shame will be exposed. I will take vengeance and will not spare anyone. Our Redeemer, Yahua of armies, is his name. The Holy One of Yasharel sits silently and go into darkness, daughter of the Chaldeans. For you will no longer be called the queen of kingdoms. Who's the queen of kingdoms? It's not China. It's not Russia. Again, be honest whenever you're answering this. The queen, who's the number one? The number one is America. You will no longer be called the queen of kingdoms. I was angry with my people. I profaned my heritage and handed them over to you. Okay? If you don't know, Yah's people was handed over to America. You did not show mercy to them. On the age, you made your yoke very heavy. Yet you said, I will be queen forever. These things you did not consider, nor remember the outcome of them. Now then, hear this, you luxuriant one who lives securely, who says in her heart, I am and there is no one besides me. I will not sit as a widow, nor know the loss of children. But these two things will come on you suddenly in one day, loss of children and widowhood. They will come on you in full measure in spite of your many sorceries. I want you to understand many sorceries are going on in America. In spite of your many sorceries, in spite of the great power of your spells, you felt secure in your wickedness and said, no one sees me. Your wisdom and your knowledge, they have led you astray. For you have said in your heart, I am and there is no one besides me. But evil will come on you, which you will not know how to charm away, and disaster will fall on you, for which you cannot atone, and destruction about which you do not know will come on you suddenly. Persist now in your spells and in your many sorceries, with which you have labored from your youth. Perhaps you will be able to benefit. Perhaps you may cause trembling. You are wearied with your many counsels. Let your astrologers think about this solar eclipse coming. Let your astrologers who prophesy by the stars, those who predict by the new moon, stand up and save you from what will come upon you. Behold, they will become like stubble. Fire burns them. They cannot save them from the power of the flame. There will be no coal to warm by nor a fire to sit before. So have those become to you with whom you have labored. Those who have done business with you from your youth. 
Each has wandered in his own way. There is no one to save you. There is no one to save America. You can try to do what you want to try to remove this curse, but this is judgment, the judgment of the Most High against the daughter of the Babylon, the daughter of the Chaldeans. And again, be honest, who in this world has inherited that throne? It is America. So you can say, God bless America, but it doesn't matter whenever a, whenever a judgment pronounced and written in scripture has been pronounced against this same nation. So I want to do another one because this scripture is considered apocrypha by many, but this one I wanted to read because a lot of people also don't know that this is inside of the Bible. It talks about a nation will be suffering because of the children of Yasharel it received. So it says, Baruch 4, 30 through 35, take a good heart, O Jerusalem, O Jerusalem, for he that gave thee that name will comfort thee. Miserable are they that afflicted thee and rejoiced at thy fall. Miserable are the cities which thy children served. Miserable is she that received thy children. I want to say that again because we have to have the visual, remember all of the suffering that the children of Yasharel has suffered inside of not just America, but throughout the world. The scripture says, miserable are the cities which Thy children serve. Those places where our ancestors served and where some of us are still serving will be miserable. And it says, Miserable is she that received thy sons. For as she rejoiced as thy, at thy ruin and was glad of thy fall, so shall she be grieved for her own desolation. For I will take away the rejoicing of her great multitude, and her pride shall be turned into mourning. For fire shall come upon her from the everlasting long to endure, and she shall be inhabited of devils for a great time. If you want to pray for America, pray that the people in America who are not infiltrated inside of the Babylon system, those who are just going along with the culture, going along with things unknowingly, those who might have a heart for Yah, but are not awakened to the truth of what that country has done inside of this world, what it continues to do. Because again, America pillages the poor people of the world, the suffering, it still pillages them. America is not rich because it just became rich. It became rich because it exploited the nations of the world. So when you want to pray for America, pray for the people who are just going along with things, maybe not thinking about the spiritual implications of the system they live in, because there's going to be a lot of people who are caught off guard, who might not have been aware of what America has done and will do, who might not be aware of the roots and the history of America, who just might be going along ignorantly, because again, this is not something, a truth that's going to be promoted inside of the Babylon system. If you want to pray for America, pray for those people. And if you want to pray for America, also pray for those who suffer at the hands of America. Pray for the many nations that suffer at the hands of America. Pray for the children of Yasharel that are still being in captivity in America. Pray for our brothers and sisters who at this particular point don't have a way out of Babylon because they are incarcerated. Pray for those people. Pray for those who Yah has told you to pray for. Those people who are not a part of wickedness. Those people who are not promoting the wickedness of Babylon. Pray that they be able to come out of her. And as for the nation of Babylon, the, ch the daughter of the Chaldeans, Rejoice at Yah's judgment because Yah's judgment is perfect. Rejoice at his judgment. Do not be sor sorrowful. Do not try to make it into a, a wicked thing or a wrongful thing. If, if judgment comes on America today or tomorrow, don't put it in your mind that something is happening that was ordained by Satan. Understand the sentence has been over this nation before the nation even existed. Think about the profoundness of that, that Yah knew way back then that, oh, there's nation, this nation is going to arise. It's going to be a child of the Chaldeans, a child of Babylon. It's going to do even more wickedness. And this also, again, is attributable to the many European powers that coordinate with America and also doing wickedness throughout this world. So if you want to pray for people, pray for those who need to come out of Babylon. But as for Babylon, its judgment is pronounced. So let's understand that that is what has been said by Yah and it will be done according to his plan and his will. So thank you all for watching this video. Yah willing. I'll Prior to Abraham Lincoln, the government in this country said it was legal to hold Africans in slavery in perpetuity. Perpetuity is one of the University of Chicago words. That means forever. From now on.
When Lincoln got in office, the government changed. Prior to the passing of the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments to the Constitution, the government defined Africans as slaves as property. Property, people with no rights to be respected by any whites anywhere. The Supreme Court of the government, same court, granddaddy court of the one that stole the 2000 election. Supreme Court said in its Dred Scott decision in the 1850s, no African anywhere in this country has any rights that any white person has to respect at any place, anytime. That was the government's official position backed up by the Supreme Court, that's the judiciary, backed up by the executive branch, that's the president, backed up by the legislative branch and enforced by the military of the government but I stopped by to tell you tonight that governments changed prior to Harry Truman's government the military in this country was segregated but governments changed prior to the civil rights and equal accommodations laws of the government in this country there was back segregation by the country legal discrimination by the government prohibited blacks from voting by the government you had to eat in separate places by the government you had to sit in different places from white folk because the government said so and you had to be buried in a separate cemetery it was a part take a American style from the cradle to the grave all because the government backed it up but guess what governments change where governments lie God does not lie where governments change God does not change and I'm through now but let me leave you with one more thing governments fail the government in this text comprised of Caesar Quirinius Pontius Pilate Pontius Pilate the Roman government Failed. The British government used to rule from east to west. The British government had a union jack. She colonized Kenya, Ghana, Nigeria, Jamaica, Barbados, Trinidad, and Hong Kong. Her navies ruled the seven seas all the way down to the tip of Argentina in the Falklands. But the British government failed. The Russian government failed. The Japanese government failed. The German government failed. And the United States of America government, when it came to treating her citizens of Indian descent fairly, she failed. She put them on reservations. When it came to treating her citizens of Japanese descent fairly, she failed. She put them in internment prison camps. When it came to treating the citizens of African descent fairly, America failed. She put them in chains. The government put them on slave quarters, put them on action block, auction blocks, put them in cotton fields, put them in inferior schools, put them in substandard housing, put them in scientific experience, experiments, put them in the lowest paying jobs, put them outside the equal protection of the law, kept them out of their racist bastions of higher education, and locked them into positions of hopelessness and helplessness. The government gives them the drugs, builds bigger prisons, passes a three-strike law, and then wants us to sing God bless America? No, no, no. Not God bless America. God damn America that's in the Bible for killing innocent people. God damn America for treating us citizens as less than human. God damn America, as long as she tries to act like she is God and she is supreme. The United States government has failed the vast majority of her citizens of African descent.